阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛。Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue our treaties and response and retributions part twelve of section three. Um, it's been a long journey on this one, and uh, yeah, we've been more than halfway, so almost there, almost there. Uh, to the end of this uh, wonderful uh, cause and effect books. Uh, remember like, why we go through all this, um, just to remind ourselves day to day about, you know, every action has reaction, every cause will yield into effects. And, um, you know, these actions, deeds, if understand in context of, you know, the society we're living now, it's a bit easier for us to navigate uh, through all these, you know, um, uh, different scenarios because it's more complicated you know the world is more complicated now more um multifaceted you know, more 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 aspects to deal with you know not not as simple as it was um so it's always good to have you know this kind of a reference point for us in case we are encountered with choices in life if anything else just to give us an understanding you know uh, what is right what is wrong and uh, um, how do we navigate this to get the best outcome you know for yourself and for your family uh and you know and and in the end of the day it's always do no harm you know the precepts the whole point of precepts is do no harm you know ahimsa not inflicting violence on people you know not inflicting harm on other people uh and that includes yourself you know we're also sentient beings we also um self-harm when we are not uh restrained our desires, you know, like in case of, you know, uh, drinking too much alcohol, uh, watching too much TV, those are trivials, but, you know, it will build up, it will harm you as well, you know, mentally, physically, uh, you know, thinking too much, over, you know, over worried, you know, um, sometimes why do we worry, right, and, and, and leads to all these in unwholesome deeds, you know, like people trying to you know, attain something they are not supposed to have, you know, uh, take something they are not theirs, you know, that's the causes of all these crimes and offenses, you know, take what is not yours, um, refuse to listen to reasons, to, you know, um, sound advice, you know, uh, allowing your um, desire to run rampant over your conscience and over other people's, you know, property, lives, and you know, uh, dignities. So that's, you know, what constitutes a lot of this transgression. And the core of all this is um, our um, desires against our, you know, our understanding of cause and effect, which helps us, you know, keep in touch, keep in check. Um, ultimately, we understand, as Buddha has mentioned, the four noble truths right first thing is suffering that's it that essence of life is suffering what do we constitute suffering the absence of pleasure the short-lived nature of pleasure the fleeting moment of happiness we have is a suffering in itself the foundation which is flimsy and untrue that we build our ideas, value, concepts on. This is suffering. You know, false sense of self, false perception, um, erroneous view, erroneous understanding. Because first thing we cannot see beyond what we can see. We're very narrow minded as a species, very short term, short living. And the second is, you know, a bunch of external, internal interference. You know, outside you have disasters, inside you have great hatred, ignorance, the turbulence of mind and the turbulence of nature. Those are one-to-one, -one. you know, there's cause, there's effect, you know. Um, 
and crisis of faith, crisis of you know um, faith in you know our ability to perfect ourselves in 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 because of so many bad examples, negative examples. All right, I mean the fact that you have these books listing out you know a big chunk of these deeds, you know misdeeds that we did um, as a human, you know uh, common misdeeds that were committed by human race. Um, easily committed, you know, by human race of different walks of life is proof of that. You know, why this book has such a big part just talking about crimes and offenses. So this is suffering. And this is a truth that we cannot deny. The problem is how we deal with it. You know, a lot of people have a erroneous view on that as well. Some people took their own life up. Some people took, you know, the easy way out. Some people hide beneath intoxicants, substances, abused. And this is all because it's so painful and and, and suffering, uh, and they're trying to escape from the suffering, and they use whatever means they have at their hand to escape from it. How unfortunately, just like I mentioned about the four noble truth, this substance abuse or whatever the pleasure we can seek from you know last from um, our sensory is built on a flimsy untrue foundation. So building a castle on sand, it will fall because it's not on a solid ground. The ground is not even true to begin with. So that's step one, which is the right view. To have a cultivate a right view means that you already know where you're going before you even start your journey. The whole point of the journey is just to figure out you know how do you actually get there. The problem is you don't even know where to go. That's the worst part. That's the hardest part, not the worst part. That's the hardest part. And once you go on that journey, the difficulty is just actual realizing it, holding on to these um, directions so that you can gain re- enlightenment. Enlightenment means you attain happiness, real happiness. Uh, you attain you know, yourself in the true sense, not whatever the ideas, perception, the consciousness is. Not not fooled by your five senses, not fooled by your mind. All right, outplayed. You outplay your own mind. You outplay your own maze. You outplay your own puzzle. This puzzle was set up by yourself, and you become a shadow of your true self, so to speak. All of us, all beings, and everything else that happens in your world and in your satellite. That means the outside of your self as you call it now, this body is a manifestation of you, you know, how you see the world, how you shape the world. Of course, collectively, you know, collective efforts, how you shape the cities, how you shape the mountains. Um, so I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm trying to just, you know, bring this into uh, perspective before we go into the point one, point two, clause number one, you know, it becomes uh, a law study or something. The point of all this is just to understand, you know, those are the paths that are branched off um, from, you know, from the right view, the right understanding. What is right in this context is the path that actually leads you to, you know, finding yourself, finding your footing, um, in not just in this world, but beyond as well. That's very important. Um, if we just base purely on this is 80, 90 years of lifespan that is very flimsy. There is building on sand, you know, it's nothing compared to the universe. So going back to this, like I said, you already know the direction for us, Pure Land. And if we are not convinced yet, we need to learn about what it is about. We need to experience life, you know, no amount of sitting in a room and just think about it can help you. Life just happens. It will happen in your face and when you face life you understand what Buddha actually means you know follow the truth suffering and then he went to you know the cause Kojima the the accumulation of sufferings cravings desires trying to get out of suffering end up creating more sufferings Um, you know separation of from your loved one is a suffering Uh, getting not getting what you want is a suffering working too much is suffering eating too much is suffering not eating enough is suffering so those are the condition of human, not human, just all lives in this um, state is constantly craving, constantly wanting, because uh, there's always a sense of lacking um, 
such is our um, starting point you know, in this existence. Hence, we call it the Sahara world. Yet we persist. Yet we still here. Yet we still going on. Yet we still live day by day. And why Buddha say this as a Sahara world? Sahara means kindred. In Sanskrit, you know, they translate to Chinese, which are now I translate to English, is a world that we, although a lot of in discomfort, a lot of inconvenience, you know, took such a you know thousands of years before we reach a mass rail mass transit railway system you know this is only a very modern invention a railway right back then we have to walk on the feet on on, tr on on ox cart that's not even a common thing it takes so long to get to here in, te in technology wise and then so many things as well you know medical and stuff like that such an inconvenient world and then we made something out of it and this is the observation by, by Buddha himself, who has seen lives come and go, come and go, in the light, in the time span, in the time span that we never could imagine in our current status of enlightenment, which is not there yet. Uh, we're not seeing what he see. So what he see is an observation, right? This world, everyone make most out of what is very inconvenient, very um uncomfortable existence um, and we, 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 we are here yet we are here so this is our special qualities you know like uh, this is like uh, you know there it's too cold now we just make fun of it and you know keep on keep on going you know what else can we do right and that stoic attitude I think this is the right word for it stoic attitude you know despite this uncomfortable somehow, you know, un unpleasant um, day to day, uh, you know, it's also based on our attitude and how we get about, you know, how we see, see the world as well. Um, so we move on to me, you know, the um, how do we cease the suffering, right? It's not a straight line, you know, but Buddha, of course, who has seen the existence and himself also going through this process. He, um, he just marked the path to us, say, eventually you have to walk on this journey, sooner or later. If you really want to get to the, uh, one way is called equilibrium, or the other way is called nirvana, or, you know, getting to the other side, you know, to the, the point where, you know, all this happy and sad, you know, these contradictions, this uncomfortable, happy and uh, uncomfortable un uh, inconvenience, will become a thing of a past and, um, and so, hence we need to start working on, you know, correcting our course, our speech, you know, our deeds, our action, which is deeds, our speech, the way we speak. All these acting, actions and speaking like words is the result of your intent, right? It used, it's, it's to execute your intention. So how do you align your intention becomes the central dogma in this central um, strategy in a way, the topic of uh, cultivation, you know, spiritual cultivation, and especially in Buddhism or in the system that Buddha has born in the Hinduism, they put a lot of emphasis on that, you know, meditation, you know, tranquility, um, and Buddha especially emphasized on being patient in spite of humiliation, in spite of um, in spite of you know uncomfortable uh, situation and un desired situation, you know you don't get what you want, you don't get the food you want. You need to be more patient with yourself and others. It's very important because you need to see beyond just why I don't get what I want, but you know why is it like that? You know such is the world, and what do I make out of it? You know we have a very um, ingenious way of making something that is undesirable bearable so uh, that's why we were called not just by our Buddha but by other sentient beings they know us you know people from other groups see us this group of people living in this you know universe as a people who can withstand a very unbearable world 
because some people are uh, most of them sun sao, mean sun to earth sao. You know, the condition of other world is more kindness, is more um, generous around. That means people are more kinder, people are more generous, less Darwinism, less you know situation you see now in this world. You know, big it's big it's small, the strong bullies the weak. Uh, you know, deceit. Um, yeah, you know, uh, and dishonesty, you know, untrustworthiness, those things are common here, which is san, erdo san sao, you know, the evil deeds are more than the kind deeds, such is our world. And when they see us in this unbearable social conditions and uh, uh, stuff, then they call us like uh, people who live in this Saha world, who can bear these unbearable um, conditions. Because back in their world, they can see they are more kind. They are the whole structure is less, you know, depressing in a sense. So why do we have this world that we live in right now? Why do we have all this um, very negative, very short lifespan? Very you know, hundred years is very short for human. You know, we used to have eighty-four thousand long lifespan, and that's the maximum lifespan we can reach in the human realm alright but you know we're shortened down to 80 that means a lot of wrong was done then what is right and a lot of other religions even though they don't sh they don't have the same foundation as Buddhism but they refer it as original sins or stuff like that similar but not exactly you know the whole point of it always go back to cause and effect you know there, when there is a situation happening in our world you know, it's phenomenal. Uh, why this person do what they did? There is a cause behind it. All right, and what is the cause behind it, right? And what we're learning in this Taishan Gaiyin Pian is the cause behind it. All these negative deeds, you know, done not just recently, but it has been done since human are uh, human in this world. You know, and as the society get more complex, this well. We use the word sins, you know, these misdeeds, this misplaced action, speech and intention is stronger, it's deeper, it's more complex, it's more treacherous. Um, and hence it creates an even snowball into a bigger suffering, bigger, you know, bigger balls of suffering, you know, from small scale tribal war to, you know, a more organized warfare and then into a bigger one and now we went to the nuclear age where anyone of us can simply just any government can just simply end this easily the whole human civilization all right so why am i bringing this out to us it's just to wake us up right amidst these songs and colorful and you know technological wonders this is the condition of the world and we must bring up the understanding of you know, what Buddha's taught us, you know, if we want to help this world, we need to first help ourselves by getting out of here. All right, there's no other way. Getting out of here and bring as much people who could take this teaching out of here as soon as possible. So by understanding how do we get out, by understanding the needs to get out of here, um, you know, people can say, oh, wow, you know, you're coward, you're running away. It's not running away if you're sinking with the rest of the ships. All right, it's not covered if you understand if you understand the teaching. What we're trying to say is we need to get out so that we can see things clearly, so that we have the means and the endurance. Most important is the endurance to withstand the even more unbearable condition awaiting us in the next nine thousand years of the Buddha Dharma. So, Buddha Dharma has fifteen thousand years of um, lifespan. You know, because of the condition, you know, we have about 15,000 years uh, long, something like that, 1500, something like that. 10, 000, the last 10,000 years is the Dharma ending age, where people no longer pay much attention to their practice. They can't even attain enlightenment. So they can't attain enlightenment in one lifetime. All right. That's the common observation, right? The last 10,000 years, this is the night, uh, we already passed the first thousand years. We have 9,000 years left. That's how long Buddha's Dharma will be heard. 
and you know just to bring up a lotness you know otherwise we just keep going through the points and not, not knowing where we go with this so the last 9,000 years right we are in the beginning of the 9,000 years left uh, of the Buddha Dhamma um, expiration date so to speak so the first 500 years is Buddha himself he started this and he started the you know examples people just listen so uh, I think for those who attend or heard my Buddha story that I share you know they just attend enlightenment by simply understanding the Four Noble Truths a very foundational basic concept but they have such a high level of uh, understanding and they can perceive very well they gain enlightenment that means no longer bound by this life and death life and death uh, drama you know all this hard work only to enjoy next life only to see yourself creating negative karma in next life and creating your negative negative karma in your next next life basically you undo your condition of undoing is planted in next whatever life you have because you do good deeds here but you never attain that level of non-attachment to the good deeds you're born as a king someone in power someone in wealth and then when you enjoying pleasures you know put aside all this uh, you know um, uh, we call it you know supernatural stuff from modern people's perspective just purely look at the behaviors of the rich and powerful how many people are virtuous as in how many people can restrain themselves how many people has released themselves as in become reckless you know act against the interests of the public how many people can withhold that moral fiber integrity not much most would either go to corruption as in you know collude all right or use the power and hence the power that commands thousands of lives perished in a struggle for power those are the realities in china outside of china doesn't matter look at human history that is the truth and that's why buddha doesn't want to be king why how however virtuous his rule is it will only last how many years give it a few thousand years that's it all he created is a temporary heaven a temporal heaven in the sense of peace and order people are more virtuous and kind because of the role model but it's only lasting few hundred years give him one thousand the most through dynasties but not no more than that that is not thorough that is not how we attain true enlightenment like as in true happiness right not saying that we negate the good king or good leader but thorough way is what he did letting go of this worldly possession if his condition is correct and pursue spiritual enlightenment what is spiritual enlightenment that means we elevate our we reduce our reliance on sensory for happiness we reduce the disturbance for happiness uh, we reduce the disturbance from our body you know this is what he found we reduce the the, the interference from the outside sources and also our real our mind our understanding as well um, that all we need to rely on this body on solely for pleasure he will go for the middle path you know just take care of your body enough it's not starving it's not you know freezing to death it's not you know dehydrating it, it, you take care of it just enough but then the rest of the energy must be spent on pursuing you know something beyond 80 years of or 100 years of comfort that is a worthy investment right even a basic business knowledge is you can't just take 100k of you uh, know usd and then uh, invest in something that only can get you uh, the same amount back right you invest 100k you only get 100k back that's not the wise way of investment the investment should be you spend 100k in there you get 1 million you get 1 million back you invest 1 million you get 2 million same goal for spirituality right of course that one is based on greed but does it have to be not really it's a tool greed means you you, you attach you, you think this is your life blood but it's a tool it can be used to build schools hospitals or you can use it 
to fund atomic bomb and bomb someone else. Up to you. Right? Same goes for enlightenment. Right? Some people use that as a tool to attract monies, hence all this transgression, deceitful, wasteful behavior, blah, 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 shamelessness. Some people, like Buddha, he knew the real value of this. Is from finite to infinite. You know, he transforms something where it's just finite. Get some good food, get some good, you know, companion, you know, for your for your emotional needs and then for your uh, uh, body needs, something very short term, right? He didn't forsake all this, he just make it very minimal. And then he maximized his energy because we only have what hundred years to live at most. That's that's your time. I don't care how rich you are, how poor you are, how desolate you are, how happy you are. You only have that much. Average, 100 years. That's it. All right? Most people, 80. All right? That's the time frame. That's it. So Buddha is very smart in this way. How long do you have? You know, you can enjoy now. You can enjoy 10 years, 20 years. The most is 80 years. On your deathbed, once you lose the breath, where are you going? All right? I said, oh, it's all speculation. We don't know where we're we going, man. Why are we learning this? You know, all these morals is used to bound you from, you know, your freedom. What is freedom? Right? What kind of freedom are we talking about? Right? Putting a ballot in, in a ballot box so that we can kiss ourselves and saying, oh, we actually, uh, you know, produce a, a actual freedom. It's foolish. You know, those are conditions. There's so much. You're only one in a, what? One million, 100 million population. Those are short term. I'm talking about. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not discounting all this. I'm just saying that. What? What's next? You know, just like when when you go and go to work, go to invest. You don't want to just stuck in the same loop. You want to improve in the very least, even just by a little, by a little. This is how things works, right? And so same goes for Buddhism. It's the same logic. You need to improve your assistant, day by day, minute by minute. You don't want to stuck in that loop again. Same habit, same um, behavior, same attitude. You know, yielding same results, and then stuck in the same thing again. This is suffering, All right? So why are we learning this? You know, I'm asking myself why am I bringing myself to do this, and why uh, Auntie Ian's working so hard to bring air, bring herself to learn this in the middle of a morning in US? Why? Uh, Melinda, you come here as well, uh, and Auntie Yen so early in US to learn this. Why am I bringing myself to do this as well Monday? Sometimes I don't even bring the energy, you know. So th this laziness is so strong because we need to be aware of the crisis. Once you're aware of the crisis, it's like a jab in the, in the lake and you're bleeding. You need to stop the bleeding. You can't just sit there and say, yeah, I'm just going to have some, you know, uh, a, a couple of uh, a coffee first before I uh, patch out my bleeding. You're bleeding. You need to heal it, right? Um, same goes for us. We're dying, right? We're dying. We're approach dying, right? We celebrate birthday, you know, to thank our dear parents and elders and predecessors to give us a comfort life. But same times we're celebrating our death as well, our in imminent death, all right? Remember, I don't frame it in a way of oh everything is useless. No. Right. If everything is useless, there's no, there's no need for us to do this kind of talk anymore. We can just go back and continue fooling ourselves, thinking we'll be fine. No. The reason why we go and chant Amitabha for every weekend, why are we doing this every single day? Why Master Ching Kong spending 60 years talking about, you know, we need to go to Pure Land, we need to chant Amitabha for? It's because it works. You know, it's because if we understand how meaningless, you know, the pursuit of pure pleasure on flesh, of pure pleasure on, you know, your mind, you know, which is your own maze set up by yourself. You know, you're fooling yourself thinking that that's it. When you are actually more than that, right? Not saying you should negate the well-being of your body and your mind, but those two are your tools, your instruments, your extension, not you. Just like the car is not you. Your car is an extension of the lake. It cannot be you. When times comes, you need to cut the car loose. You can't just hug the car forever. It serves as a tool of transportation. So does your body. So does your mind. Mind as well. Don't think your idea is you. 
idea changed, right? Relationship changed as well. I love you, I love you. 10 years later, is it the same? No. Of course, it can transform into a better relationships, but it also can get worse. You never know. You never know what's going to happen, right? So that's not you. You as in impermanent, impermanent, unchanging. You can control. If this is me, why am I getting older every day? Why can't I just go to Pure Land now? Right? That means I haven't found myself. Right? I hope you get my gist. I, I'm, I'm going roundabout way because I don't want to just run through the point again without knowing where we're going. I'm just trying to summarize um, as well, I hope. And uh, later when we look at this, we actually understand that. Uh, you know, this one. Indulge in excess bravery and luxury. Right? It's all in the context of this. You know, why are we restraining ourselves? Why are we going to retreat? You know, why are we cutting down, you know, our intake of delicious foods, you know, uh, or, or, you know, why are we, why are we doing that? Right? Just for the sake of it. Buddha has experimented with it, right? Before he gained enlightenment, he followed whatever the teachings they have, which is very insightful as well, not to this step. They're actually very wise people. It's just they haven't found that breaking point, it's just like scientists, right? They're trying to find a breaking point. It takes them 400 years to get to where they are now. So that's the enlightenment path as well. It's day by day, built on experience of previous generation. So he learned all that. He's like, okay, now I'm sitting down under the tree, eating only one pine nuts per day, half a pine nuts per day, you know, starving myself to death, almost to death, literally. I can't even stand up. For what? I neither gain any insight about the conditions of our being and unbeing, life and death, death and life. Where are we going with this? You know, in deep meditation, you can see people in six realms. You know, before Buddha has break the threshold, everyone, even back in India, those people who, like I mentioned, in the cosmology, highest level of heaven, right? Which is also life and death, death and life, just in the cosmological spans, just like insects, right? They only live in the morning and night. When the dusk, they born. And dawn falls, they die. We look at them just like the heavenly beings look at us. That's the only difference. I have 100, uh, 100 years or 80 years to deal with. They only have one day. But in that one day, it's like what we experience in 80 years of our life. It's just compressed. All right. So the mindset is different. It's an understanding that we now know the fact is we only have no more than 100 years lifetime. That's that's all we have, okay? That's a reality. That's a reality. No matter how happy, how sad, how bad things go, it goes both ways. How happy things go, you only have 80 years of life. Doesn't care your religion, doesn't care your ideology, doesn't care your gender identity or whatever. 80 years of life, that's it. So how long of these 80 years of life you want to spend on arguing some nonsense or arguing on something that yields nothing in the end when you last drop your breath do you think do you think at the end of your, our deathbed people will care about those ideas and stuff like that if it's not helping everyone to advance no right that's why that's where things get real all this all this um, you know surface level stuff will go away all this noise will go away that's that's where real your your essence is tested. That's where you are reduced down to the raw, real part of yourself. And that part is where you need to build your effort on, improve it. I, I can't describe it because I'm I'm trying to get there. I'm not there yet. I'm just trying to share the sentiment that, you know, it's not a meaningless life. It's just we are spending our energy meaninglessly. Right? Uh, and and it's up to us to find it. But I'm, I don't want to put it on a, you know, on a cloud out there and let you guys float around. That's not what Buddhism is. All right. The whole point of us having all this structure learning is because they have, after generations and generations of experience, not not sitting there looking at the sky and thinking, actually living through life and understand that that's how it is. And they experience it, they put it in Analects and Confucius, they put it in the Taoist book, they put it in the uh, whatever the books, uh, you know, Bibles or whatever, they, their experience is there, condensed. And then they tell us, you know, 
whatever that speaks most to you, follow that path. And hopefully, you know, we will get better, if not out of the six dreams, we get better. Next slide. So now we have this chance. All right, Amitofo. All right, as a pure land practitioner, all right, I need to emphasize this. We have this chance. We do have. It's just how much we understand this um, help us to go far. You know, if we don't understand it enough, we like deep in your bloodstream, like deep in your heart level, not just mind, heart. If we don't understand to our heart, that makes us like, you know, really want to do it, really want to get there, then we can't yield the result in this lifetime. You will have results, but the traction is not strong. And to do that, many tricks. That's where all the tactics coming up, you know. We learn about this, you know, if I'm a better speaker, I would have done more work on getting the real life examples to get the point across better uh, than this, but um, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so back to this. This empowering others we mentioned last week, um, to amass wealth by foul, distaste and illegal means, right? Win promotions via stratagem and fraud, right? When we learn the fun, we understand everything we do, right, is a result of our past. Everything we received is a result of our past action. And that past can be as long as past life or infinity past, all right? It's just whoever has the strongest, um, like strongest intent will surface, you know? Like if we do something repetitively, all right, and put a lot of effort, attention to it, that thing will become natural to us, right? So that's our past. Whatever we do a lot of time in the past, if we scold, if we swear a lot in the past, the swearing is natural to us. If we meditate a lot in the past, when we go into a meditation, it just comes like very natural. You can easily get into that state of, you know, tranquility, all right? If we smoke a lot or drink a lot in the past, now we still like to drink, all right? Right. If um, you know, um, if we have a bad blood with that person in the past, and that person appears to you, you would naturally want to spit at him just because he's there or she's there. Because in the past you have a bad um, behavior, it planted in your mind. That's why I'm saying this is a maze, and we need to break. All right, um, we can't be. While well, it would be good if we can focus on metaphor alone, but we are not that honest unfortunately, all right? Sense we need all this understanding to ground our heart. How to say, put ourselves on two feet on the ground, all right? So that we know where we are, no matter how low or how bad it is or how high, how good it is. We have two feet planted on the firm ground and understand where we're going. So on this case, people who are not planted two feet on the ground will use this kind of strategy. They misuse it. They will misuse their smarts to attain to attain wealth that they can enjoy no more than 80 years, like I mentioned, you know, uh, 40 years, 30 years, you know, and promotion as well. This thing cannot be forced. This thing is um, done by your performance. At the same time, the right, uh, the right people understanding you right position opening for you and and then right kind of people knowing your uh, ability as well right um, self-promotion is a thing but it can only get you so far you know um, and if you if you if you do your part right do your job right you have that confidence you have that um, level of um, self-worth and understanding you don't need this kind of tactics all right um, that's why direction is important you know if we just spend all this energy smart you know you those are intelligent people you know they're not dumb very intelligent people you know um, can think in thousands of scenarios hundreds of scenarios no problem but the problem is where do they put the effort in you know trying to um, you know trying to scan money trying to um, put all this effort in something that is so fragile, so untenable, you know, it's a waste of time. 
instead if they if, if we focus our energy on you know um, just what you have right now and make most of what you have right now and then in your position help people achieve what they want as well you know this goes what goes around comes around you help others others will help you you don't even need to think about when you just do it because it's the right thing it's just it's just good feel good as well right naturally you will have that level of connection people will want to find you every time they have something up they will they will say this person is reliable he's been helping many times let's help him right that's how it works right in this case is you know you do it in a way you 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 cause people to lose their livelihood you cause people to lose their position this is what i mean all right all right nothing's wrong with a little strategy but obviously you would prefer to keep it genuine and pure and and you know just be yourself don't need to ask for that you know and in in, in chinese as a way of saying if a person can reach to a level where they no longer need to seek and 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 yearn from others their self-worth their dignity their um, virtue will naturally be more pure be higher uh, of course this is not to be confused with you know arrogance and you know all this you know holy than thou that that is not good what we're saying is we no longer um, tie our interests at the whims of others because we're reducing our desires right the only point you have ask of others is because you want more you want something and you need that person to get that something that you want and if that something is not needed it's not important right it's not like necessary right if we if we if we can put a strong leash on you know if, if we can find joy in simpler things reducing the desires right i don't know how to describe it vividly but if we can reduce that that once within our means you know or even lesser than our means that means we find simple thing in very simple stuff no longer need to ask for you know um, favors from other people the less favor we ask the lighter we are the less um, convoluted our integrity is the less compromise our integrity is so okay I found a way uh, a word the less um, favors we ask the better our in, the, the more uh, secure our integrity is in a way right we will not be compromised easily because this I have nothing to ask from you so I was just going to deal with it factually you know in a humane and a respectful way but also fair that's how you can be fair you have no interest in this um, situation all you care about is to make sure everyone follow the rules all right okay second yeah punish and reward unfairly um like i like any society you know any organization small as a family you know just three person you know four person big as a multi-million dollar corporation or big countries we all need you know a system of reward and punishment because um, not everyone thinks the same not everyone acts the same and not everyone abides by the you know line the the the, the ethical guideline the same you know we need to have some sort of call um group um herding effect in a sense in a way of um not herding sounds very derogatory um you know an example set up an example all right uh and currently if the punishment does not befit the crime if the rewards is not you know matching the merits of course it will you know disempowered other people in the organization you know um for family units if parents are one-sided 100 percent one-sided in one child's affair uh in between two childs right if they have siblings uh and two children if the parents are more one-sided you know in, in 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 dealing with two kids or more of course the other side will feel like you know unfair and this will affect their behaviors 
not just towards in the family, towards others as well. They get more competitive, they get more you know, try hard and stuff like that. All right. Um, there is a situation, right? There's a story I read in um, uh, in, in one of the documentaries. Uh, the mother is very one-sided in her dealings with her children. She only gave two houses to her to his youngest son, and the eldest son gets nothing. So before that, the eldest son has already have a wife, and the wife is fallen sick. The mother, it was in China, basically. The mother was. Um, how to say uh, reluctant to borrow money to save her wife's um, cancer treatment his son's wife you know daughter-in-law's cancer treatment uh, this elder son felt you know it's very unfair you know like you rather you know give your money away to the younger children who uh, the, my younger brother who has no issues um, in their life like normal than saving my your own daughter-in-law's life you know and this pushed him to the brink of, you know, disappointment. And eventually, he refused to see his mother again uh, since then. And um, this mother is already 90 years old, you know, bringing a bunch of people in front of the uh, house, you know, of, of this elder son's house and say, you should take care of me because I'm your mother, while his youngest son is next to him. So this unfair you know um doing of course us who learn cause and effect we understand maybe past life this elder son really really owes her a lot you know why did she give two houses to the younger son and the and still not asking the younger sons to take care of her is you know in our current life is un unreasonable you know and 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 of course we can understand that cause and effect is like that but sentiment wise of course it's not right you know one-sided doesn't matter how you feel you know rational part must kick in must control that you can't be 100 percent equal it's fine to have the favorite child or the favorite employee or the favorite members in a group you know it's fine like you know if they stand out they stand out you know it's just affinity but bottom line is it has to be fair enough you know it doesn't have to be one-sided so skewed that it literally you know forces the, the disadvantaged one to either be violent, you know, or be dis disillusioned, disempowered, you know, they, they, they left the group. And then in terms of family, you can't just leave the family, right? It's by blood, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends. Um, so, so, hence, this kind of suffering happens as well. Um, so what we can do now is the attitudes towards, you know, treatment, not just physical rewards but treatments towards you know a larger group of people more than one people it has to be fair even one to one between husband and wife between you know teacher and student between uh, you and your friends best friends it has to be fair right right um, in terms of punish and reward as in um, the, 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 the line has to be drawn properly you know what is okay what is not okay you know um, cannot over, you know, um, indulge in it. Um, but this is mostly for the organization. So the next half is what I mentioned, like indulge in excess revelry and luxury. All right. To reward ourselves of our hard work is very fair. So tr even treating ourselves, punish and reward, right, to ourselves, it has to be fair as well. It's the hardest how do you pass judgment on yourself? It can be skewed towards over exaggeration, over narcissistic, or over harm, self harm. No, neither is good. It has to be um, it has to be in the middle path. It has to be balanced. You know? and you can't as long as you have, like I say, trap in your maze. You know, your body, your mind. If you use these two measurements, you will never a able to achieve objectivity. Only when you're fully enlightened and able to get out of yourself, of your little bubble, and see the whole seas, ocean of consciousness, instead of a bubble of consciousness, which is me, and another bubble, and he ends another bubble, how, another bubble, Michelle, we can never, we can never achieve actual, you know, equality, right? 
only when we our bubble burst and go back into the oceans, then we can see everything as one and, and all. So currently, I'm not want to go too much into that big philosophy and stuff, but we're going back to it. just day-to-day -day attitude. Anything that is too much, anything that is too excessive, should be um, avoided. Um, why? What brings these um, sentences, right? What brings these uh, teachings? Like I say, we have only 80 years of life, and just like COVID shown us, doesn't even mean that we can go 100% eight to 80 years old. You know, there's so many things in between can cut it short really quickly, right? That's a crisis. Our life is as such that we always, you know, show up vigilance, you know, in the case of discomfort, in the case of disasters. It makes us more careful. However, in the face of, you know, um, comfort situation or more or is a normalized situation, which is good, but there is a hidden danger lurking beneath a normalcy, beneath, you know, beneath a life of luxury. You know, we might call it merits, you know, fortune to live in a good country with uh, abundance of material enjoyments and you know, the living standard is better, but it's also planting the seeds of either disaster or fortune for us. Um, and this is be based on how we operate ourselves in this environment. How do we get around it, right? Do we go 100% enjoy, enjoy, enjoy it to a point of, you know, either financially challenged, bankrupt, or to the point of, you know, having a very un... Uh, unscrupulous relationship with multiple partners you know that mess up your your life it's common and also or we reel ourselves in and say enough you know enough is enough all right i'm better than this i'm going to make something useful out of it or something more valuable out of this um condition that i'm in all right you dealt with the cut you're handed with right and that's the only cut you have. So now what can you do about it? Now you have good cuts. You're born in a good country. You're born in a, uh, you know, a place where you have a luxurious life, a relatively comfortable life, right? You might not be the richest or in the upper class, but you're in the comfortable middle class or comfortable life. So what can you make of it? You know, what can you give a little bit more to the society or to, to, to the aspirations? You know, less just mindless indulgement in games, in in food, in you know, relationships and stuff like that. You know, we can't be just animal of pleasures, or animal of. We can't be just living in or uh, eat, sleep, drink, wake up, party, eat, sleep, drink. Those things get tired very quickly. It's another form of suffering. This thing does not last forever. All right. Of course, in in times of difficulties, you know, in our case, maybe you know, COVID, one thing. Um, even COVID for our case, like, I'm very privileged to enjoy a more, a very comfortable uh, position and role that I don't have to worry about livelihood. So that is why we need to think about, you know, how do we prepare ourselves, not just for the crisis, or also in the times of peace, comfort, what can we do more, you know, what can we practice, you know, we practice generosity, practice uh, meditation, um, practice uh, vigilance, you know, the whole, ch whole thing of chanting Amitabha for is to practice vigilance. Vigilance of what? Of our time passes us by. That one moment of you able to concentrate either on Amitabha for whatever meditation you're doing or prayers you're doing is one moment saved for future, for now and future. Right, this one moment of enlightenment. Well, enlightenment does not happen suddenly. Oh, enlightenment! It's it's an accumulation, right? Subconsciously, unconsciously, not just consciously. Consciously, you're doing this, all this thinking, blah 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 blah. Unconsciously, there's even more work at work. But all you do is put a lot of input, and then you get used to this mode, right? So those little moment of awareness, xiao wu, xiao wu small enlightenment leads to a bigger enlightenment. Just like science, right? Small understanding, 
accumulate, accumulate, leads to big understanding. The thing is, in diff different from science, we are the, we need to cut down the dead weight, so to speak. You know, the thing that weighing you down, those burden that you cannot cut off, you need to turn it advantages, as in the relationship needs to be better and better, needs to be benefiting them, needs to benefit themselves in order to improve the relationship so that it does not impede you from improving your um, progress towards enlightenment. We, and also we need to cut off the dead weight, which is you know, the burgage, the burdens you know, that we don't need to carry outside our obligation. We need to let go. All right? Unnecessary you know, pursuits, let go. Because we already have a goal in mind. Right? We already understand 80 years. And I'm not going to spend my time in circles. I can explore that. I have a phase of that. But I'm not going to continuously loop myself in the same circle. That's not how I want to live my life. All right? I want to improve better and better every time I step forward, no matter how hard it is. All right? With the help of the teachings and everything. And my, my, my intuition, my experience, and also with advice from friends. All right, examples from the teachers, from, from, from other bodhisattvas, you know, from, from say, um, Master Ching Kong, from other venerables, or from your colleagues who display extraordinary compassion despite the hardships or the crisis facing them. So those things are your teacher. You know, we need to learn to be San Chai Tongzi, the um, one of the sutra in Avatamsaka, it teaches us um, not to indulge, but to learn, to pick up, to absorb, to grow, to 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 expand your awareness, right? While maintaining um, your compass in the center, not swayed by others. The more you understand, the more you experience, the less able you are swayed. As long as your heart is set in the right directions, or and then slowly and slowly you're building up, right? By cutting down more and more attachments, right? And eventually we will realize that even the attachments towards our loved ones, you know, our most important one, family, friends, those needs to be let go temporarily in order to actually help them thoroughly. And that starts with, you know, from this little argument bickering, you know, on certain points, certain ideas, you let go of that. You understand that, you know, we want that bridge to continue, you know, so that we can still communicate, right? Or on the other hand, you have a very loving relationship, the parents are really care about you, really, you know, like you, attach to you, or take care of you, but you don't want it to be um, the only thing that makes you stuck in the six rooms. So what happens when you're stuck in six rooms, which is what we're doing at the moment, is they themselves continue their journey in six rooms when they passed after 100 years old, hopefully 100 years old and beyond. And ourselves, if we're stuck here and get attached and all that, we also get into the six rooms after 100 years old, hopefully. And where are we meeting? No idea. Where are we going? No idea. So he, they're lost, you're lost, everyone is lost. Your son is lost, your children is lost. We're going nowhere, right? Our existence is, or next life, maybe the best scenario, we meet again. I will become our family again, or different functions. Nothing nothing gets done. Nothing really, uh, how does it improve? Maybe it will when you have a good relationship. But because we have this opportunity now, I have to be more sharp in my words. You know, we can't let this opportunity go. It's like, you know, investment coming up. That one chance, that's it. If you take this chance, you might be a millionaire. In our case, you take this chance, you actually get enlightened. But of course, the attitude, the understanding, the way we position our perspective, it's up to you. You know, it's not something I can tell you. It's, it's just this, you know, path shown by the sages, the Buddha. Uh, you know, you need to have the vow, you need to have the xin yuan, the vow to go there. You need to have the faith in yourself. And that is built by your own action, you know, your faith in yourself. 
uh, able to withstand temptation better, able to um, understand like mature, right, maturity, able to know what is important, what is not. Yeah, those things does not come naturally to most people, not myself included. It takes time for you to grow out of it. Eventually, you like, I don't want to spend time just, you know, fumbling around this. That's it. I'm going to move on. I'm going to let go of this. I can do that. And I do it in a sound, rational way, not, you know, hot-blooded, just impulsive. There are times to call for your impulse and you just do it without going back. But this has to be backed up by a well, how does it, backed up by your um, accumulative effort, maturity, understanding. All leads to that one moment and then you let go of all the breaks and then you just go forward, never turn back. All right, those things are stage by stage. All right, there are always a point where you can like, you realize like that's it, this is it, you know. If I do this, there's no stepping back. I'm going forward. You know, I'm going to achieve what I need to achieve. All right, and 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 that's how we do. It. Same goes for spirituality. Buddha do not turn back. When you sit on that body tree at the age of thirty, he's like, I'm not turning back. That's it. I already experimented with all these techniques. Now I'm going to find out how, how to get out extremes. Even it cost me my life, my body life. I wouldn't like, as in, even my body withered. I will not get out of my meditation until I find a solution. Because he has accumulated all this understanding experience. So he sat on that and then he's like, that's it. I'm not coming back. All right. That level of courage, the level of decisiveness, is required from each of us, you know. Not as dramatic as I say it. You know, it can be just okay. I'm not. I'm not gonna get attached. Um, yeah. So the last one before we um, end this. This is nine thirteen. Um, treat servants and subordinates with abuse and disdain to instill fear by threats and coercion. Mm. Disdain. Okay. In our context, we can be like, you know, you are well off. Maybe you 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 know you do pretty well off. You have status. You have you know respect and reverence in society in certain field. And now you're treating someone who just came over, or maybe in a position where they have to service you, and you treat them with disdain, right? Treat them with um, rudeness, with arrogance. No, uh, it either can be concealed or outright. Doesn't matter. It's just your remark, your intention, is arrogance. I mean, you think you're better than them just because, you know, you think you made it just by yourself, and the rest of them, you know, they struggle in that uh, different stages. It's lesser than you. That mindset is what brings this kind of um, mentality. You don't treat them as equals, or you don't treat them with respect even though difference in status, right? And this is because of arrogance, because you're thinking, oh, I made it here because of my hard work, and then the rest is like, nah. Everyone has their own conditions, and we must respect that, even though they are beggars and homeless. It, shouldn't, it should go without saying. And if we can't even have that level of, you know, respect towards others, equality, we can't practice what we practice now, compassion, Buddhism, those are, those are, be, those are because we're trapped by our arrogance, our superiority complex. Like someone has inferiority complex, be trapped by our superiority complex. Uh, just because you wear well, you dress well, look well, or you, you have that, uh, you know, status and stuff does not give you an okay to do this towards other people. Right? The higher you get, the more humble you should be. Otherwise the harder you will fall. That is a guaranteed way, not by my mouth, by history, by the right of history. This is how it works. You know, those grudge that you create when you're all high and level, all high and mighty, you know, will come back and bite you when you've fallen out of grace. And trust me, there, are t there will be time when we either not fallen or step back, you know, and no longer be in that position of authority and power that it will come back and bite you. 
So if anything else, always think about one thing. You know, what goes around comes around. You know, you never know you might end up with that person's positions, right? You know, and never, you know, do not, no matter how emotional you are or how bad you are, never direct to others, all right? Never, all right? Manage it yourself. If you can't speak out, you know, have a proper sit down. You can be a bit emotional and stuff like that. We're humans, but do not lash out on people who has done you no wrong. That's the whole point. Right? Servants are human too. Right? Even back in the days, they have slave system. Right? It does not even warrant them to treat them ungentlemanly or un uncautiously. Obviously, it's a bad thing. But um, I'm talking about people to people, not system. Right? This is all about attitudes. So the attitude is always with respect. Treat them like human. Not just human, animals, right? Horse. Car. Of course, we don't deal with these animals uh, as a 21st century city person, but there are situations when you deal with, like in farms, or in, when you deal a lot with natures, right? You cannot, you know, abuse them. Just because the law says, uh, I didn't say anything, it does not warrant anything, uh, us to abuse any sentient beings and not just sentient beings trees public facilities vandalism right this expands to that just because it's your tool right and it helps you um, you know to achieve whatever you want pens to help you to write express your idea you know cars you know to, to, to carry you somewhere you want to be or uh, drinks those are trivial stuff right treat them with respect you know right Cups put in the right place, wash it properly. All these little things build up your, your sense of respect towards all beings. And remember, one of the ten, you know, Si Da Yun, right? Those ten vow from Bodhisattva Universal Worthy. Pu Xian Ma. Universal Worthy. Right? How do you be universally worthy? His name already teaches. Right? To be a Buddha, first stage you need to be universally worthy. Worthy, worthy of respect, worthy of reverence. How do you be worthy of reverence? I always say that if you want to walk across thousands of prostration pointed towards you, that means thousands of people put their head down towards you with utmost reverence. You need to do the same for millions. You need to do millions of prostration towards all these sentient beings. That means Buddha do not owe anyone reverence because they treat everyone even with higher reverence with higher respect. So Buddha does not have superiority complex when he walked past, you know, the beings that give them the high respect. Like with, back in the days in India, they literally just let the Buddha walk over their body, willingly. This is how high the respect he gave the Buddha. Literally we know in Buddha's past life, he has done thousands of times like this to other Buddhas, to other beings. So he has no problem accepting this. He don't say, oh, I like this. He just accepted it. And then he also, you know, show it to others, you know, by Dharma and by actions. So same things for here, all right? We are not the servant. We just have a mindset of I'm the servant of other people. I'm serving, servicing people, letting go of that ego. It takes time as well. I, I'm working on it as well, but yeah. Last one, instill fear by threats and coercion. Is it better to be loved or feared? That's a question. Do you want to be feared or to be loved? Right? Sometimes in the position you're in, you know, instill some sort of respect. But a lot of people might say fear inspire respect. However, that fear in mentioned here, Kong he, is not the same level of fear, uh, like the Christian would say, the fear the God, or fear the fear the uh, sages. In, or in Chinese, Jing Wei, respectfully, you know that fear is a respect, is actually reverence. Fear as in you don't, fear as in you don't want to, in uh, you don't want right. That actually, that actually, you don't want to um, disrespect or you don't want to cause. Uh, indignity, uh, indign indignified the other person because you you treat them very, I mean you respect them very much. So in this case, this fear 
that's why the word has different contexts. This fear is threats and coercion. It's you know causing them um, harm, it's like, like you causing them unease, like killing, you know, like um, blackmailing, like psychology bullying, you know, like you you instill that level of fear that they no longer want to go to work, go to school, just because you are popular, uh, you're well spoken, you're more eloquent. You can make jokes at their expense. Uh, you can organize a bunch of kids and you know wait for them by locker or something, bully them, you know even directly or indirectly, make make sharp remarks, you know, uh, or you know behind the scene you know you say something that makes them really you know, scared. So those, all right, fear is a transgression, and it will just like giving or fearlessness leads to long life giving of fear this fear that threatens people will shorten your lifespan that's how cause and effect work right that's how we understand this all right the same thing is you you will lose respect when your time is up so a person who warrant reverence from others it cannot use just fear by itself it has to be it has to come out from a heart of um, you know kindness compassion you know and 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 then from that intention they act according to the situation like if that person is out of line right that person uh, this leader act out of understanding however uphold the order the rules in the class in the company in the line and tell them you know this is a warning if you do it again or whatever you know like whatever they did let them know the line if they cross it one time two time and then too much then you inflict punishment fairly right not just because you like to do that because you need to instill sense of order and respect in the case of like monk they don't do that because they are not managers they are practitioners they are teachers so they do them do it onto themselves how they do it you know how they eat you know how they see, like master um, Hong Yi when he was witnessing his students misbehaving he don't eat for whole day he just don't eat he don't say anything he let them go about their days but then suddenly when they're waiting for their master to eat imagine master Jingong just don't eat whole day because you speak something out of line that level of guilt the level of unease is there but he's not inflicting on you he's on himself and say I didn't teach you well so I'm not eating now so Master Hong Yi literally do that to his students when he's, uh, he's the Chinese um, precept schools uh, one of the you know not pioneer but he continues the tradition very well revive it so that's how you instill respect you, know, you 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 carry yourself properly, and then if someone else not doing right thing, you try to um, you know make them aware why what did they go wrong instead of just straight away you know give them the punishment. You let them understand why they shouldn't do what they did because what they did actually harms others and, and themselves. And when they get that, you don't need to do much. When they don't get that, all you have is a higher population of prison inmates colluding because, you know, why not, you know, to survive in that dark society. And when they get out, they get even more blatant in their actions. And that do nothing, all right? That, that, that does nothing to help your society, your countries, uh, no matter how harsh your law is, you know, those those are something important. Human heart, you need to grab the human heart, not just the action. Because action, speech, all these behaviors is executing an intention. And if that intention does not get across, nothing gets across. If your intention of instilling this punishment and stuff is to make sure they don't uh, do something harmful again, and so they can have a better life, you know, then you need to make sure your action delivers that, not just punishing the action only. All right. 
Uh, I think I'll stop here because uh, we already go past the 20 minutes. Before I end this, um, welcome Hao, uh, our third audience of the of the of this week. Uh, and any one of you have any issues or um, questions? Sorry, I this be at the beginning I start with yeah more like a reflection before I go into the actual point because I think we, we need that time to time I need that time to time as well <clears throat> if nothing we can uh, end this uh, right now and uh, we'll see you next Monday so this Sunday right in Australian Sydney time uh, 10.30 to 11.30 unless otherwise told we will be having our speech, I mean our Dharma talk uh, by Venerable Wooding. Uh, Venerable Wooding will be giving his Dharma talk online in here, Teams, uh, in the public group in Teams. Um, so please welcome to join us. Uh, I will be the host as usual, but it will be Venerable giving the talks. So it should be good. Yeah. It, will, it will be good. Thank you. Let's dedicate our merit and chant in terms of Amitofo. May the merits and virtue adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. Alright, ten times Amitofo. Amitofo. A me to for 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 Thank you everyone, have a good um, day ahead or good night. So, I'll be done.